The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you each Wednesday by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. And one and only is right, friends, because there is no other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. No other salad dressing has that distinctive flavor, that lively, teasing flavor that's peppy, yet not a bit too sharp. It's a flavor millions prefer. Enjoy it on your salad. Tomorrow, get a jar of the one and only Miracle Whip. Let's see what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. In the first place, there's an unmistakable note of happy anticipation in the air. Last week, the doctor said Marjorie and Bronco could expect the baby in a week. Well, it has been a week. Right, George, this is the day. I can feel it. Gildersleeve, you'll be a grandfather before the sun sets. Yeah, I wonder if it will be a son. Rock a in the treetop, where the wind blows, the cradle will Birdie come. Birdie feels it, too. When the bell breaks, the Oop. cradle will fall. Even little Leroy. Down will come baby, cradle and all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Gillespie. Good morning, Birdie. Hi, Al. Pretty good, huh? You well, good and loud, Leroy. You, what are you trying to do? Frighten the stork away? <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna scare that bird. He's been hovering around this house too long. Bertie and I think today's the day, Unc. You will? I think so, too. Yes, sir. And I'll have breakfast ready in a few minutes, Miss Gilsey. Yeah, fine, Bertie, fine. Unc, I think I ought to be big about this and stay home from school today. You, what's this, Leroy? I shouldn't think of going to school on the day my sister might go to the hospital. You will? There isn't much you can do here, my boy. You go to school. I wouldn't feel right about it. No, Leroy. With my sister in the hospital, I couldn't do justice to that arithmetic test they're giving today. (laughs) You will try, Leroy. Force yourself. Gosh. Well, here comes Bronco. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Bronco. Hi, Leroy. Hiya, Pop. Pop? Oh, oh, yeah, Pop. Uh, Marjorie coming down soon, is she, Bronco? Well, she thought she'd stay in bed a while this morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah. Oh, she's feeling fine, you understand. Happy as a lark. Well, good. But she thought she'd stay in bed a while. Yeah, I see. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think I'll stick around the house this morning. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I thought I'd stay around home this morning, too. (laughs) Just feel like it somehow. Heck, I feel like it, too, but is anybody sympathetic? <laughs> yeah, you'll get to stay home tomorrow, Leroy. It's George Washington's birthday. I want to stay home today, on my nephew's birthday. No, let's not try to make a holiday out of this, Leroy. Gosh, you may become a holiday. My nephew may grow up to be president, too. It... Yeah. Why don't you let Leroy stay home today, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well... President Bronco Thompson, Jr. <laughs> Well, you can stay home, Leroy. I can? Sure. What the heck? Let's make it a holiday for the little president. Oh, what another game of checkers, Bronco. Thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I can't seem to concentrate this morning. Well... Here comes Bertie with Marjorie's empty tray. You two gonna stay around all morning? Well, there's no hurry, Bertie. Did Marge eat a good breakfast, Bertie? I never saw her eat that. She's wondering why you two men don't go to work. Well, doesn't she think we'll be needed, Bertie? (laughs) She says, how you gonna support a family if you don't go out and sell that real estate? Well, it's a holiday. No, sir, tomorrow's the holiday. Yeah, you're mixed up, Bronco. 
President Bronco Jr. hasn't been inaugurated yet. <laughs> yeah, I guess I will have to support him for a while. And there are a couple of deals I should be working on. Sure. Go ahead, Bronco. Are you going to the water department? Well, my situation is a little different, Bronco. I don't have to call on my customers. Anytime they want water, they just turn on the tap and it comes running. <laughs> there ain't nothing gonna happen today, Mr. Gillsleeve. You and Mr. Bronco are too ready for it. Well, you can't be too sure, Bertie. Yes, yeah, sir. When you're too ready, nothing happens. Well, that could be, Bertie. Yes, yeah, there ain't nothing gonna happen today because you're too ready. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Bertie. The day the car won't start and you got a flat tire is the day it's gonna happen. But the day you're too ready. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Yes, yeah, sir. You and Mr. Bronco might as well go to work because it ain't gonna happen today. You're too ready. No, Bertie. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know why it ain't gonna happen today? Yes, yeah, Bertie. Not, it ain't gonna happen today because you're too ready. <laughs> Go to work, Bronco. You're too ready. Hello? Oh, yes, Leroy? Hey, where's Bronco? Well, he went out to see a prospect. Oh, nothing happening, huh? No, uh, not today. Everything's running too smoothly. Gosh, would it be terrible if I stay home from school all day and nothing happens? Yes, yes. I might have to stay home from school for days. <laughs> Leroy, I doubt if your scheme is good for more than one day. Okay. Find the garage key, huh? The garage key? I want to pump up my basketball. Yeah, all right. Say, where are my keys? Maybe you lost them. Can't afford to do that. Key to the house, key to the office, the key to the car. Key to the car? What's the matter, Unc? Nothing, my boy. If I can't find the keys, I can't start the car. What do you care? You're not going anyplace, are you? Well, no. I don't think so. They'll show up. They've got to. Don't get excited, Leroy. Who's excited? Everything's running smoothly. We won't need them. I do. I want to get the pump. We may have to go to the hospital. To blow up my basketball? <laughs> Leroy, don't just stand there asking questions. Help me find my keys. Okay, gosh. Look everywhere. Look high and low. Look up. Here, wait a minute. Here they are. Under the cushion on the couch. Yeah? Yeah, I found them. I found them. Leroy, I found them. What a character. <laughs> I never saw a guy get so excited about blowing up a basketball. Yeah, here are the keys, my boy. You'll find the tire pump in the back of the car. Thanks, Uncle. You Wait a minute. Leroy. Huh? Yeah, I think I'll go with you. It won't hurt to see if the car will start. In case I want to go downtown for a cigar. It started. Oh, hasn't it always? Since 1939? <laughs> well, you never can tell. But everything's running smoothly. You say, the front of the car seems to be leading a little. Yeah? Oop. Tire's nearly flat. Must be a slow leak. Can't drive with that. Excuse me! Uh oh. Hey, Aunt Bertie's yelling for you. Yeah, I know, Leroy. What is it, Bertie? Oh, my goodness. Bertie, I thought you said it wouldn't be today. I was wrong. But I've got a flat tire. I was right. <laughs> Quick, Leroy, the pump. Sure. Get over there. Oh, Judge. Judge, am I glad to see you. You are. Thank you. Judge, you're just in time to take us to the hospital. Oh, Marjorie? Yes, Judge, this is it. Go start your motor. Oh, I'm sorry, Gildy. I don't have my car. You don't? No, the battery's dead. I came over to ask for a push. Quick, Leroy, hand me the pump. You got it. Oh, yes, I've got it. Yes. What can I do to help, Gildy? Stand back, Judge. I have to pump up this tire. Unc, you're turning red. Yes, let me take it for a while, Gildy. Yeah, I can do it, Judge. But Gildy, I want to do my bit. And I'm in good shape. I'm long-winded. 
I'll say you are. Take over, Judge. Oh, thank you. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Holy cow, look at him go. We're ready, Mr. Gale, please. He's coming, Bertie. You watch it, Leroy. I'm backing out. Gale, get away. Leroy, what's that? The trunk's still attached to the tire. Roper. I got it up. Yeah, good boy. Stand aside, Leroy. I've got a dash to the hospital. Hurry up. Yeah, what now? Aren't you going to take mine? <laughs> Marjorie, hurry up, Bertie. I've got a slow lead. Friends, here's a good idea for you the next time you plan to have guests in to lunch. Make your main dish a tempting shrimp and tomato salad. And to be sure it's just as delicious as it can be, serve plenty of wonderful Miracle Whip salad dressing alongside. Because Miracle Whip has such a delightful flavor. It's lively and teasing, neither too mild nor too sharp. It's a flavor that millions of folks everywhere call just exactly right. And you know, Miracle Whip's flavor is truly distinctive. Because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe that combines the qualities of grand old-fashioned boil dressing and fine mayonnaise to give you the very best of both. And besides that perfect flavor, Miracle Whip has a texture that's really wonderful. That's because Miracle Whip is blended a special craft way till it's smooth as satin. So, actually, it's no wonder Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing, is it? No wonder at all that Miracle Whip outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. So, whether you're making a fancy salad for guests or a plainer salad just for the family, make it extra good with the one salad dressing millions prefer, smooth, delicious Miracle Whip. Get back to the great Gildersleeve. In spite of a leaky automobile tire, he got his niece, Marjorie, safely to the hospital. And he feels better now that she's in the capable hands of his girlfriend, Nurse Catherine Milford. Is there anything I can do, Catherine? I'm afraid it's out of your hands now, Throckmorton. Why don't you and the judge just sit here and relax, huh? Yes, Gildy. We can sit here and look out the window. Say, there's Leroy. Leroy? Where? Look. He's climbing that tree. He is? I guess he wants to be close to the scene also. Too bad Leroy isn't old enough to come to the maternity ward. Yeah. I guess I'd better raise the window and wave to the boy. He sees you, Gildy. Hey, what's going on? Shh, Leroy, this is a quiet zone. What is it, a boy or a girl? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we don't know yet. We're waiting. What? Yeah, better close the window quick. Leroy is so cute. This is quite an occasion for little Leroy. Well, it is for all of us. <laughs> what do those bombs mean? Oh, Throckmorton, stop worrying. Dr. Maser is here. Uh, well, good. I'll go back to Marjorie now and leave you two here in the father's room. By the way, where is the father? You Bronco? Mm -hmm. well, I've been wondering about that, too. Uh, Bertie stayed home in case he phoned. Oh, I hope he's here in time. Yeah. How much time is there? Not very much. You're going to be a grandfather before you know it, Throckmorton. <laughs> Just think, Gilbert. Yeah, I'm thinking, Judge. I know how you've looked forward to this moment. After raising Marjorie from a little child, giving her in marriage, you are privileged to be present at life's greatest moment when the nurse appears and says those beautiful words. It's a boy. Or a girl, as the case may be. Mm. It'll be a wonderful, Judge. I wouldn't miss it for the world. There's one thing, though. What's that, Gilly? You know, Bronco should be here. He should hear those words first. Yes, he should. Where could he be? He could be any place. I guess we had him convinced the baby wouldn't be here today. I wonder if I could find him. Well, it may not be time, Gilly. 
If you leave, the baby may come while you're gone. Yeah, I know. But Marjorie wants him here. And he wants to be here. And this is the big moment in both their lives. You're right. You're absolutely right. It could be a long while yet. I might have time to find him and get back. Don't you think, Judge? What do you think, Gilby? Could I ask you what you thought? I don't know. You, know, for goodness sake. What are you going to do, Gilby? Well, I... Oh, why am I stalling? Bronco has to be here. Don't leave, Judge. Stay right in this room. Where are you going, Gilby? I've got to find that boy. Well, where are you going to look? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I'd stayed up in the tree. He may be missing something. Leroy, we have to find Bronco. He has to be at the hospital when the baby comes. What does he have to do? Sign for it? <laughs> no, Leroy. It's the father's big moment. Why are we stopping out here in this field? Leroy, this isn't a field. It's a subdivision. Yeah? Bronco is bringing a prospect out here today. And I don't see him. Let's go back to the hospital, Unc. No, we have to find Bronco. Say, isn't the car leading to the left again? It always leans when you're in it. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I think the tire's going flat again. Leroy, watch for a free air sign. getting embarrassing, Unc. You what? That makes three times you stopped at that filling station for nothing but air. Well, Leroy, you don't have time to let them change the tire. You stopping at home? Yeah, for just a minute. Uh-oh, tire's going down again. Filling stations aren't close enough together. Leroy, man the pump while I go talk to Bertie. Okay. Bertie! Yo, Bertie! You probably just killed Yes, Bertie. Is Bronco phone? No, sir, not yet. Oh, my goodness. I better phone the hospital. I just talked to him. He isn't there? No, sir. No. How is everything? They say the stock circling for a landing. Oop. Uh, Leroy, detach the pump. We have to find Bronco. <laughs> Bronco wasn't at Floyd's barbershop. I don't know where else to look. How about stopping and asking Mr. Peavy, huh? There's a parking space. Yeah, it's a good idea, Leroy. Yeah, better see how the tire's holding up. Oop, it isn't. Leroy. I got the pump. Gosh, I got my human gas station. <laughs> yeah, Leroy, I'm as tired pumping as you are. I'll be back in a minute. Just don't lose any ground. Okay. Gildersleeve? What can I do for you? Phoebe, have you seen Bronco? Yes. You have? I saw him just the other day. He was on his way to the post office. <laughs> Phoebe, he ought to be at the hospital. Why, is he sick? No, no, Phoebe. We just took Marjorie there. Oh, it's the baby. Yeah, and Bronco's out selling real estate somewhere, and I can't find him. You don't say. The father should be there. I don't want Bronco to miss the biggest moment of his life. Oh, my, no. I don't want to miss it myself. I'm practically the grandfather, Pete. My, my, this is exciting. It's too exciting. Yeah, I better call the hospital. And I'd better call Mrs. Peavy. Yeah, do you have a nickel, Peavy? <laughs> yes, thank you. But, Peavy, I want to use the nickel. I'll give you one in a minute. Mrs. Peavy has looked forward to this day. Yeah, but... She's always been very fond of Marjorie. Peavy, this is important. I know. Yeah, I need the phone. Uh, Mrs. Peavy? This is Mr. Peavy. <laughs> Marjorie went to the hospital this morning. Isn't that nice? Look, Peavy. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve didn't say. I I'll ask him. Hold the phone here. Mr. Gildersleeve, is it a boy or a girl? It isn't here yet, as far as I know. It, it isn't here yet, as far as he knows. Yoper. What's that, dear? Mr. Gildersleeve didn't say. I'll ask him. Hold the phone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Gillespie, what are they going to name the baby if it's a boy? Yeah, I don't know, Peavy. Do you know what they'll name it if it's a girl? No, Peavy. He doesn't know. Uh, Peavy, please get off the phone. Just a second, Mr. Gillespie. How's that, dear? Yes, I'll keep you informed. Goodbye. Uh, uh, by the way, you haven't seen Bronco, have you? Yo, brother. The reason I ask is because I'm trying to help Mr. Gillespie. You big help. Goodbye, dear. All right, Mr. Gillespie, it's your turn, and here's your nickel. Yeah, thanks, Petey. You're very welcome. Yeah. You better check with the judge to see if they look at his uncle. Summerfield Hospital. Yeah, the father's room, please. It's urgent. Naturally. I'll connect you. Yeah. Thank you. You on, Judge Answer. Hello? Hello, Judge. No, this is Bronco. You well put the judge on. I wanted to see if Bronco is... You Bronco! Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're wrong, I've been looking all over for you. I know, Mr. Gildersleeve. I made it. Has anything happened yet? No, not yet, Mr. Gildersleeve. But they say... Uh-oh. Miss Milford's calling me. Yes, she is. Bronco. Bronco! She's gone. Yeah, I'm going, too. Going to the hospital, Mr. Gildersleeve? You bet. It's a race between me and the stork, and I'm going to win. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to make it. Those bells. I wonder if they have anything to do with it. Oop. Excuse me, madam. Your nurse. Yeah, I'm wanted here in the father's room. Here he comes, Bronco. Your judge. Bronco. Mr. Gildersleeve. Guess what? You what, Bronco? You mean the baby's here? It's here, Mr. Gildersleeve. It is? A boy? No, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's a girl. A wonderful, lovely little girl. Isn't that marvelous, Gildy? Well, Fine. Little girls are nice. How's Marjorie? Miss Milford says she's fine. Oh, Marge is the most wonderful girl in the world. Quiet, Bronco, quiet. You're in the maternity ward. Oh, shh. Well, little Marjorie's a mother. Yeah, how much does the baby weigh, Bronco? Three pounds, 15 and three quarter ounces. <laughs> Just three pounds? And 15 and three quarter ounces. She isn't a large girl, Gilly, but she's perfect. Naturally. Well, she'll grow. We'll feed her well. <laughs> it all happened just before you came, Gildy, not two minutes ago. Too bad you weren't here. Well... Mr. I... Gildersleeve, you'll never know how much I appreciate you chasing around looking for me. But hadn't been for your message, I, I wouldn't have made it myself. Oh, I'm a happy father. Well, I'm a happy grandfather, too. But I'd give a million to have heard them say it's a girl. What'd you say, Gildy? Oh, nothing, Judge, nothing. Bronco? Oh, yes, Miss Milford? Oh, hello, Throckmorton. Yeah, hello, Catherine. I have news for both of you from Dr. Macer. News? It's a boy. A boy? But you said it was a girl. This one is a boy. <laughs> Another one? Congratulations. I'm the father of twins! Yes, did you hear that? Oh, I'm the so grandfather of twins. Oh, I'm so happy. Boy this girl. is a surprise. Isn't it? The boy weighs four pounds, one and a half ounces. Twins! Two of them! I can't believe it. Yeah, I've got to tell Leroy. He's waiting out in the tree. Leroy! Yes? Yeah. It's twins! Are you no, a boy and a girl. Holy smoke, I'm a double uncle. <laughs> Are you going to see him? No, Leroy. Hold him up to the window. <laughs> you can see him later. Go home and tell Bertie. Through the glass. Perfect little babies. Yeah. Bronco, those are your children in the nursery. The nurse is holding them up just for you. 
Hello? <laughs> you have to keep them warm for a while. They're little tykes. You wonder which one is the boy. Well, that one has his mouth open. That must be the girl. <laughs> Rocco, you're not looking. Hmm? Yeah, but what? You're a somatic. You feel all right? Oh, yeah, but I... Bronco. But me, yeah? You can see Marjorie now. I can. You can? Well, come on, let's... Well, hurry up, Mr. Gildersleeve. No. You go. I think I'll stay here. Go ahead, my boy. Where is she, Miss Milford? Which room? How is she? Is she all right? Yes, yes. She's fine. Right in here. Oh, thank you. Marge? Bronco? Hello, Mother. Hello, Father. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. They made me stay outside. I couldn't do anything. You were here? Sure. I knew you would be. We have twins, Bronco. I know. Two of them. <laughs> have you seen them? Sure. Oh, they're cute. The girl looks just like you. And the boy like you? I didn't notice. We didn't think of twins. What do we name them? Name them? We'll talk about that later. You better sleep now. Did I do all right, Bronco? I'll say you did. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be right back. Friend, it's no small thing. I mean, the salad dressing on a salad. While most folks agree, salad dressing makes the salad. So don't take chances with your salad success. Make your salads taste extra delicious with the salad dressing. Most folks agree tastes just exactly right. Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip tastes so lively, so teasy, and yet it's not a bit too sharp. As a matter of fact, Miracle Whip tastes so delicious... It's been America's favorite salad dressing for years. Try it, won't you? For sure, salad success, use the salad dressing millions prefer, the one and only Miracle Whip. Bertie! Bertie! I'm did you hear about it, Bertie? Did Leroy tell you? I heard it. We got twins. That's what we got. Yeah, a little boy and a little girl. Ain't that something? How's Miss Marjorie? Yeah, just fine, Bertie. Just fine. You and I'm a wreck. We raced around town all afternoon, pumping up that darn tire. Yeah, at last we can all relax. Speaking of the car, Mr. Gilsey, Mr. Bronco just called from the hospital. Yeah, what's this? Miss Marjorie needs a slippers and bed jacket, and I told him you'd bring them over just as soon as you got home. You... Leroy, yeah? man the pump. <laughs> Good night, folks. The great Gilbert Street is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Robert Armbruster. Included in the cast are Walter Chetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Prenna, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve.